Step into the Old West, where swinging saloon doors were real, whiskey was far from smooth, water could be deadly, opium was a recreational trend, and price gouging ruled the day. Explore the untamed history of a wild era in a nutshell. Number one, swinging saloon doors were real, not a Hollywood invention. In every saloon scene and every Western movie ever made, you'll see the iconic swinging saloon doors. That's how bad guys get thrown into the street. It might be easy to think of this as a Hollywood invention, but these batwing-style doors were actually in popular use during the Old West. Here's why. Saloons were much smaller than you would think, about the size of an average bedroom. We're talking your kid's room, not the master suite. With no air conditioning or ventilation, the saloons got hot and smoky really quick. Batwing-style doors offered a little tiny bit of privacy, while letting plenty of fresh air in and stale, smoky, body odor stench-filled air out. They were also open enough to let music and laughter drift out the door. Saloon owners hoped the sounds of merriment would entice passers-by to stop in. Because parts of the West had a high crime rate, saloons were equipped with a double-door system, swinging doors during operating hours, and solid floor-to-ceiling doors with stout locks to keep the whiskey safe when the saloon was closed. Number two, speaking of whiskey, it was god-awful. If you bellied up to the bar in the Old West and expected the bartender to pour you a glass of smooth Kentucky whiskey, you'd be sorely disappointed by the terrible swill you got instead. There were not a lot of laws regarding the content of alcoholic beverages back in those days, and let's be honest, no one would have obeyed them if there were. What saloon's owners sold as whiskey was often some concoction of actual whiskey mixed with creek water, distilled molasses, grain alcohol, cider vinegar, fruit juice, axle grease, and lord knows what else. No wonder Old West whiskey had nicknames like Tangle Leg, Coffin Varnish, Chain Lightning, Cactus Poison, Mountain Howitzer, and more. It wasn't until 1897 that the Bottle and Bond Act was passed, guaranteeing the contents and quality of whiskey. The Food and Drug Act of 1906 put further regulations on whiskey and other food and drinks. Boring. Number three, forget dysentery but don't drink the water. Fans of the 1980s computer game Oregon Trail will tell you that most pioneers in the Old West died of dysentery or rattlesnake bites. Not true. The leading cause of death for folks in the Old West was not dysentery, snake of bites, shootouts with rival gunslingers, or attacks by Native Americans. Nopey. It was cholera. Cholera is caused by waterborne bacteria that thrives in stagnant bodies of water, like ponds, puddles, and slow-moving creeks. Pioneers in the Old West didn't have fancy water-filtering straws that today's hardcore hikers have, so when they got thirsty, they drank water from the closest available source. Unfortunately, many of them slurped up the cholera bacteria along with dehydrogen monoxide and were hit with severe diarrhea, vomiting, and abdominal cramps. Within 12 hours to a few days, the person was dead, often from dehydration. The only treatment option available to them at the time was an opium-based painkiller that did nothing to actually treat the illness. Number four, the Old West had an opioid problem. Think opioid abuse is a modern issue? Think again. Chinese laborers who came to California during the gold rush and to seek jobs building the transcontinental railroad brought their opium smoking with them. For the first time, opium, which had long been an ingredient in medicine, was used as a recreational drug. The Chinese immigrants passed the opium pipe to the Americans they worked with, and starting around 1870, opium use boomed in the Old West. It wasn't just gamblers and prostitutes that enjoyed the opium pipe either. It was average farmers and ranchers, and their wives. Here's a twist. Many of the estimated 250,000 opium addicts in the late 1890s vocally supported the temperance movement. Alcohol, they declared, was so evil and destructive it should be banned, but opium, well, there's nothing to see here. Number five, the West was ripe with price gouging. When gold was discovered in California, it set off a massive migration of people who headed to the West, hoping to get rich quick. They soon realized that the only ones who were really getting rich during the gold rush were the price gouging merchants who took advantage of the situation and the lack of government oversight. The cost of items sold at the gold rush camps were mind-bogglingly high and makes our current inflation problem seem trivial. A dozen eggs, for example, cost about $3 in 1851, comparable to a dozen eggs today. 
but when you adjust the 1851 price to today's equivalent, that carton of eggs would be $105. Merchants also charge $20 for a pound of butter, more than $700 today. That is one expensive-ass breakfast. <laughs>